DD214 Gaming Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Gaming is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. Good morning and welcome to today's episode of the podcast. I'm Jonathan, your host and proud resident of New Jersey, where we pump our own gas and talk with our hands, all right? Now let's bring in our expert panel. First up, we have Joe Scolini, a.k.a. the Gadget Guru, and next, the birthday boy, okay? Oh, yeah. Give him a special shout out. Happy birthday to the titan of the backbreaking, Jay fucking Campbell. What's happening, guys? My guys, Cheers. my guys, what's going on? How's everybody feeling today? Man, that was uh, that was a very uh, boisterous uh, introduction there, John. I'm fucking digging it. I'm fucking I'm feel- digging it. I'm feeling pretty fucking good, my guy. I'm feeling pretty good. Dude, I just me- have to ask, how many lines did you do before this fucking episode, bro? <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's, it's, hey, what it's, was that it's, shit we used to hawk? What was that fucking energy energy drink? Like, what was that stuff? Fucking no. The stuff on here on the podcast. Remember when we had like a sponsorship very briefly? Oh, um, oh Rogue. Rogue. Oh, yeah, dude. Did you blast some fucking rails of Rogue, dude? Like off the fucking, off the bathroom counter before you fucking stepped out? It's been a while, guys. I, I'm clean. I'm clean. But it's all in the THC9, all right? It's all, all in right. the THC9. All right. I also want to say, I, was, I, I have to send a, a very, very special and very hearty welcome to all, all, all of you listening today, today is the today is going to be the uh, the fifth annual Arrowhead Invitational. All right, the fifth annual Arrowhead Invitational, dude, is coming at you. The road to the Super Bowl in the AFC goes through Kansas City. So whether whether uh, my boys uh, take it home uh, tonight, which I do think they're going to, or not, uh, dude, five years in a row. Kansas City has hosted the AFC Championship. Like that's a hell of a thing. So I wanted mm-hmm. to anybody from the Kansas City Metro, any Chiefs fans out there that happen to be uh, on board with me, as far as uh, as far as uh, football goes, freaking a very hearty welcome from from me as well because that's kind of unprecedented in the uh, the AFC at least I know. So fucking a, dude. Fucking a. Yeah. Feeling good today. Feeling good. Joe, what? Are you, what how, how you doing, bud? I'm 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 here. Um. Yeah, 
definitely here. You know, a little, little upset that three pick Dak showed up last week. Dude, um, I dude, I, I, I remember the conversation. And I, I when I was watching the game, I was like, "Son of a bitch!" Like he, I fucking they, called it. You did. You called like you dead called it because it was like if he, it, they he might have gotten away with like one pick, but I think what he he threw two right. He took. He when, threw, when, he threw two. He total, threw that right? first pick. When he threw that first pick, it got in his fucking head. Dude, I was like, he he probably could have gotten away with, you know, I mean, it happens to fucking Mahomes all the time. Like, we, I'm like, gonna have to request Mahomes that that like, caption be removed. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, <laughs> motherfucker doesn't call dick. I'm sorry. Um, it's well, dude, because they they had a, you know, the you, the Cowboys had a very stellar year, and we, and it was one of those things where. Like if if you go back in time, you know, pre Mahomes, the Chiefs used to be the lovable losers of playoff playoffs in the AFC because we we had a tradition of going out in the first you know the first round of play regardless if we were uh, regardless of how we were seated we we had a tradition of going out in the first going back to like you know when Joe Montana was our fucking quarterback right yep. so we're talking like almost twenty five years straight we went out in the playoffs like first game regardless no matter how good or bad our season was. And that kind of feels like Cowboys like that. It feels like it really hurt the team last week when they when they went down. Like so, I mean, the thing is, Dak is is in no means a really great quarterback. I will definitely never say he's a a great. He he's 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 mediocre. He has the skill to play on a professional level, but he, he lets things get in his head too easily. Which okay. is what then turns around and causes shit like last week. That game, if it wasn't for our defense actually fucking showing up, would have been a goddamn blowout. Well, 49ers well, walked that, all fucking you, guys, you guys have, and that's where I was saying you got you guys have had a, a very good team this year because on yeah. you guys played well on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was when I made my prediction last week, it was predicated, it was predicated obviously on both both sides of the ball having a good game. But yeah. But, but but like but exactly like you said it was gonna it was gonna revolve around whether or not Dak was getting it done you know his his specific portion of the job done and yeah. unfor- unfortunately for Dallas like and congratulations to the the, the 49ers obviously um this is actually the first uh, first time in NFL history all all four teams left you know going you know getting ready for the the championships and the respective conferences now including playoffs have 14 wins. Mm-hmm. So all, or excuse me, at least 14 wins. Yep. So that, and that's the first time this has ever happened. So we have four very deserving teams all uh, vying for the Super Bowl, Super Bowl today. Uh, Niners against uh, the Eagles. And it's going to be uh, my chiefs, my chiefs against uh, the Cincinnati Bengals in a re- in a repeat of last year's uh, AFC championship game. So what do we got on predictions, uh, Joe, this week? I got to, I got to hear, uh, I got to hear your predictions uh, first. Um, so, so for, for NFC, I'm going Eagles. Um, and that's just based off of their, their record versus the, uh, over the 49ers, even though all teams have, you know, very similar records this season with the Eagles, you know, they are the number one seed still in the division. Um, they are the only thing that'll, yeah, they are the best team in the, in the NFC until, until somebody beats them. Like until somebody until somebody beats yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Know. And and then at the same time, a lot of their starters that weren't there, like when the Cowboys beat them at the end of the regular season, they're back in action this week. They were back in action last week, so they've got their 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 A squad going out today to play. Um, and then for for AFC, I. I, I hope it's the Chiefs. Well, I hope it's the Bengals, but it's going to be the Chiefs. Um, oh, I see. Okay. What do you? What do you? And, and what are your? What are your? Uh, like what? What? What has given you like that? Uh, so I guess that so that mind. I, I want it to be the Bengals just because they're more of the underdog team compared mm-hmm. to the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. But I feel like with their quarterback, mainly their offense, they still have a rookie QB. It's even even though even though they've beat the Chiefs the last three times they played all all in uh, calendar year 2022. So, yes, even though they beat the Chiefs all three times, 
that was regular season. This is the playoffs. We with last with the year's Chiefs AFC championship. Last year's AFC well, championship. The yeah, that was last year, but that was a different. That wasn't this QB. It was Joe Burrow's? Was yeah, it was. It was oh, Joe Burrow's? Was it? Uh huh. I don't. Oh yeah, bro. I, okay, that was a little, fucking year ago, dude. Um, the, the, the betting <laughs> line. I, I know we talk about how like I'm. You know, we don't. I don't do a lot of gambling and sport, especially not sports betting. But uh, the, the the betting line the last few days keeps shifting back back and forth between the Chiefs and the Bengals being the but under see, and overdog or you know, underdog the, or freaking favorite. I mean, the, and, the reason I feel I, I I'm saying Chiefs are going to take it is because this is their redemption game from last year's championship game. I like so this that. is this is them going in. <laughs> They're going in with a different mindset because of course the Bengals are going in with the mindset of. We beat them the last three times we played them. We can do it a fourth. And right. we're going to get, it's going to be a good game. Oh, yeah. I have there's, a, there's, there's I have a strong NFL. feeling it's going to be close, just like that Dallas 49ers game last week. There's there, there's a reason the NFL put that one in the primetime slot tonight. Like, there's a reason. Yeah. And it like the last the last three games, Bengals did win, but the, the score is worth by three, by three, and by four. So by a combined total, you know, the last three games, the Bengals have won. They've won by a combined total of 10 points. So that there's also so, that, like, all three all three games have been, yeah. ama- like, amazingly tight. So there's, there, you know, there's it, definitely something to be Exactly. They, they've the been Chiefs, really the close Chiefs games. Due, the Chiefs, the, 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 outside of some type of mon- monumental collapse, the Chiefs are due for a, a revenge game against the Bengals. So, so yeah. And, and I feel like unless, you know, the Chiefs' A players – get hurt this game they're, they're coming right. out with a you know with a mindset of okay We're, we can still beat the Bengals. we can still beat the Bengals because you know even though they've won against us the last three times it's been really close games right and they're going in with a game plan i mean any teams every team go- playing this weekend's going with the game plan every team's been watching tapes of the other teams Mm-hmm. And how they've played in the playoffs so far and regular season, developing some kind of plan of action to be able to take down their opponent. However, I feel with the Chiefs, they feel this is their redemption shot. And th- they might be able th- they might just happen to get it. Now, again, it could always go the other way. We could still see the Bengals take it and go on to the fucking Super Bowl again. And I'm not going to argue with that either. I think all, um, all all four all four teams playing today have more more than a fighting chance of winning their games. Like they're now, like that, and that's like again, this is like one of the first exactly. times in, in NFL history. You we, there are there are all, all all four slots you know heading to the Super Bowl yeah. are filled by teams that have every right to be there. Every mm-hmm. like all four of these teams have had amazing. Jesus Christ, John, did you just do rogue? Did, did you see that? Did you see his hair right there? Oh my <laughs> yeah. God! That's yeah. what he, that's what happens when you on, rogue. Bro. Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dude! I'm putting you're my sweet on. baby Jesus. What the hell? You look, you look like a crack, dude. You look like a cracked out Bart Simpson for a second, dude. Like, <laughs> I'll take it. And, I'll and take this it. is why, children, me and Jay at least get up in the morning and shower before the podcast. <laughs> is, yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, it's Sunday, okay? Listen, it's Sunday, okay? We don't shower on God's Day until 6 p.m., all right? We're not even... Okay. (laughs) I suck. You suck. Oh, dear God. I love it, dude. I love it. So, okay, so what is your most... I want to hear this. (laughs) <laughs> out of the out of the games played and the combine and the common and the different combinations of possible wins and losses, what would be the most intriguing Super Bowl matchup for you, regardless of whether or not you think they're actually going to win? What would be your most intriguing Super Bowl match matchup? Number one matchup I'd like to see is Bengals versus <coughs> Niners. Bengals Niners, okay, <coughs> okay. And then in the number two slot, it would have to be Eagles Chiefs, okay. And then tied for third would be Chiefs Niners or Bengals Eagles. Which, which is I was just going to say too with the Chiefs Niners. That's just going that would be a repeat of the Super Bowl from a few years ago that the the Chiefs. Were. So that would be a 
that would make for a that'd make for an interesting uh you know revenge game for the Niners, you know, in the Super Bowl, you know, mm-hmm. yada yada. So and and you know, the thing is like the Niners, the reason I'm going for them is just because they did play a phenomenal game against my guys mm-hmm. last week. They did. They, um, they they played very solid football. That was a very, and, very solid football game. It was. And you know, if if it wasn't for, like we said, three pick Dax showing up last week, there'd have been a chance it would have been us versus the fucking Eagles this week. Right. Mm. That's right. By That's Dak right. giving the fucking Niners the ball twice. That was that's and, what sealed the fucking they, deal for us. Well, and they and and the Niners converted points off of the off of those interceptions, and that's mm-hmm. what good good football teams do. The the, mm. the the defense takes the ball away. The offense sc- scores some, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. The offense well, scores going down the field the next time, which basically means like the defense gave you some points back, basically, or you know what I mean. Like that's the whole, you know, kit and caboodle is like converting converting points off of fucking turnovers. You know I mean? And then on top of that, on top of that, you know, we could have we could have closed the gap a little bit if we didn't put that motherfucking kicker back out there. Well, I mean, it would have been it would have instead of it being a it. instead of it being a fucking like three or four point lead, it would only been a two to three point lead. Well, sure, that the well, Niners sure. won against us because he went out, missed one fucking field goal attempt, and then for some You're right reason he finally learned how to fucking kick the ball again um (laughs) on every other fucking attempt after that (laughs) we had a couple we had a couple of games this year where our kicker like missed you know i'm not not even just field goals like fucking point after attempts you know what i mean like just like way too fucking many this year just way too fun like i don't know what i don't know what happened in the the nfl i don't know i don't don't know what i don't know what happened this season i saw you know not even just the in the chiefs games that i you know i tend to watch some of the other a lot of a, a lot of the other games around the league it's like dudes missing point after attempts is getting like a lot more common, it seems. And it's like you can't you you don't you can't necessarily guarantee the point after. And it used to be just an afterthought, yeah. you know, like you score exactly. a touchdown, it's going to be seven points on the board. Nowadays, it's like it might be six. And you start seeing you start seeing coaches like going for two a lot now where they're like, fuck it. We might as well just go for two because, you know, homeboy's going to miss a fucking point after. You know what I mean? So yep. it, it's kind Good of morning, Mac and, and Brandon. <clears throat> And yes, Max, um, voice came back 100% yesterday. I'll actually talk about that during my week here in a minute. Oh, boy. Did you, uh, did you take take a, little, take a few too many to the to the face this week, dude? Like, so I know how weeks so, like that go. When it's just so like nonstop, last nonstop, weekend, just getting like dick in your face, like all week. No, you just know what I mean? last weekend, I, I, it's... I have no fucking clue what happened. Um, to be honest, it had nothing to do with dicks in the face, Jay. Um, that's your thing, not mine. Not this Even week. Even though twenty dollars is this twenty dollars. Um, it didn't happen this week. That's what he's saying, guys. Yeah, not this <laughs> week. Not this week. But no, last weekend, just you know, out with the neighbors, did a lot of fucking drinking and shit. I think I overexerted myself from a uh, I'm getting too old for this shit type of standpoint. You're allowed. You're a veteran. Um, hey, man, hey man, 12, 12 ounce curls fucking start getting heavy, dude, after like a hundred or so. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then we, we actually kind of, you know, I'm not going to actually go that far on to that side of things. Uh, what the loop part case, that Max no, was talking more, about? M- Taking no, a dry? More, more, <laughs> Taking a dry? <laughs> more in case the, uh, the, 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 the Mrs. family ever decides to watch an episode or something. And this one's the one they come across. I'm not going to. Boy, you got the wrong did. fucking boy. Do you have the wrong two fucking partners for that shit, bro? Like, um, boy, no. if, if anybody so, ever fucking does like a deep dive, it, it, some of the shit that's come out of our mouths on this show, dude, like we are so fucked. Well, you know like, what? I, I'll go ahead and say it. So last weekend <laughs> on Saturday, you're supposed to go with the Mrs. Family to a birthday dinner for her mother, right? And after the shit they pulled the weekend before, while we were fucking live on the goddamn air, I was like, oh. I'm not fucking going. I said, if I go, I'm not going to be nice. I'm going to rip everybody a new asshole and then just walk right out the fucking restaurant. Because I'm make still here. Just fucking make a scene. Yeah. Did we, hey, did we talk about that on a previous episode? You can't go anywhere without making a scene? Isn't, didn't we already have that conversation? Yeah, pretty fucking much. <laughs> um, and so we, we, we told them. Somebody read that. Why are you on a veteran stream then? What conversation can be had here without someone talking about bobbing for cock? Thank you, Max. 
Hold Yo, on, ever on, heard of jerk mate? Max knows. I'm just, Max knows. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this like, out there. The only about, reason he knows right. about this is because he's a fucking West Point graduate. He's a ring knocker. Ooh, Navy Seals. Um, so we told them that you know I came down with COVID in the flu at the same time, and that's why we weren't going. And then Smart. I wake Smart. up on fucking Monday with the symptoms of fucking strep throat without having fucking strep throat. So it was like karma kicking me in the ass for fucking lying to her for family. Lying to, for lying to your family. I mean, <laughs> you know, hey, 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 I just, if you're worried though, I just want to, I want to, I want to, I want to remind you. I just want to remind you. Okay. That <laughs> Slayer, Slayer dedicated an entire album to this concept and the album was titled God hates us all. Okay. So just mm -hmm. remember it's going to be okay. Great album, by the way. Fucking A it is, dude. Yeah, really I mean, good album. If you're, ever, if, you're um, ever feeling, if you're ever feeling lonely, if you're ever feeling tired, you can know that we are all in this fucking giant shit storm together. Okay? Together. We are all hated equally here. Okay? Like, yep. give in so, life. So pretty much all fucking week, just, I would, I started getting my voice back Wednesday about midday, uh -huh. but by the time I'd get off work, because I sit in fucking meetings a lot and I'm having to talk, like my meetings Monday and Tuesday that I had to be in, I literally sat there on camera and just typed my responses to any questions being asked to me in a fucking chat versus talking because I didn't have try a to talk. Meeting. It would just come out like my vagina, you know, like, like no, it would. <laughs> it was so bad my lips would move and no sound came out. Yeah, yeah. Um karma huh it's a bitch so you oh, know yeah. wednesday what are you reading brandon what are you reading tell me about it or what are you, or what are you listening to but yeah same same tell me about it. i want to hear about that but yeah so yeah that's keep... that's kind of what happened with with my voice this week <laughs> um okay. and then you know by the time i'd get off work in the afternoons it would start depleting again and i could barely talk and it was more of it was more of a gruffled voice. It wasn't like I couldn't talk. It just was like permanent Batman fucking voice for three days. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, were you, were you like you talking like the Godfather, you know, like to the lady at the convenience store, and she's got like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? You know what I mean? I had to go pick up uh, two cans of dip. another uh, pint, of, pint of Jack Daniels, please. Yeah. You know, like, like I went down to I went down to the gas station to get to uh, get two cans of dip. And I'm like, yeah, I need two cans of Grizzly Long Cut straight. Yeah. <laughs> do they come? Do they come in black? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jesus Fuck. Christ! Fucking hey, I see Max. I see Max going off. Max, that is the perfect blow job. But uh, here's the thing: you have kids. When's the last time you actually got one? Oh. Yeah, you better come back with that one, dude. I want to hear about that. I want to hear about this because we just me, me and uh Squalini just had a conversation. Me, me and Squalini just had a conversation about that a couple weeks ago. Like he's you know, dude's uh dude's getting getting ready to get married. So like we already had a conversation about that a couple weeks ago. So so yeah. What uh, uh what what else what else did you do this week uh aside, aside from uh aside from get your, your throat wrecked out, you know, by freaking so life? few things um i i um ended up getting a yeah that's a very good question um tony uh yeah max is actually one of the co-founders of basement game works shout out to basement game works oh uh, welcome hello Welcome, welcome. And then I see uh, Brandon. Brandon. Brandon uh, t said that he's uh, listening to the Accidental Superpower uh, about how the uh, ge the geography and uh, and like where where it is situated in the world like made made the U.S. a superpower, which absolutely uh, is is a thing. Is a thing. It's been discussed for a long, long time, from sea to, to shining sea. Right? 46, 46, 40 Your fight. You know? Did anybody else do their history in fucking school? Like, there's a reason. Manifest Destiny was a thing. Because yep. uh, some some of the people, some of the er, the early settlers of this country, saw something, saw something, and they were fucking a hundred percent right. Like they were a hundred percent right. Because now but, we're 
yeah, we, we, we are very fortunate to reap the benefits of that about 150 years later. So sorry about that. But, yeah. So I'm a nerd. Uh, we're excited. Let's see. Today. Dealt with that all fucking week. I got some new tech. Um, okay. I was thinking about getting. Some, I was thinking about getting some new tech. I saw some shit last night, but it's not not for a computer though. It's for it's for your else. ass. So I mean, kind uh, of. I was gonna t- maybe attach it to the rail system on my uh, on my uh, <laughs> on my your weapon, AR. My weapon. <laughs> my weapon. Oh, I actually, don't have an AR. I, ha- I have. I have an M4. Believe it or not, I have a fucking M4. Can you believe that? So you know, got got um got some new tech. Ended up picking up the. Uh, latest ipad pro um which has the same so apple has now taken their ipad pro their ipads and they're starting to put the same uh cpu that's in their desktops and laptops into the ipads so instead of the ipad having a mobile processor like the iphones do now the ipads have their computer processors which make them a little bit more of a powerhouse if you need to do any video editing on the fly, anything like that. Um, Been playing around with that for a couple days. Let's see, yesterday or technically Saturday night or Thursday nights and then Friday and then yesterday spent um, a good bit of time playing GoldenEye 007. No shit? Um, they, it came out on Game Pass for Xbox. No way. And then they have it, they added it to the N64 uh, emulator on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, so shit. With, with, with it, it's not a remaster. So it's the exact same fucking graphics from the 64, which, you know, back that's, that's then were fucking remake. state that's, of the which art. Not, which means it's not a remake, which means I probably would like it. So all they did, all they did was literally port the fucking exact same game they tweaked it though so for the xbox version they left the multiplayer like it was on the 64 so you can pair four controllers to your xbox play split screen multiplayer like you did on the 64 back in the uh, they, day back for in the, the day, switch homie. version for the you guys switch ever have version, like a land party you guys ever have like a land party where your homie would like yeah. bring an x bring an xbox over to your house and shit and fucking i yeah. i i i saved up money and bought a 15 inch tv so that way, when we had LAN parties, I had a TV specifically that I would just put in the car with the Xbox and bring because the TV in my fucking room in my room was too big to fucking lug around with me. <laughs> so I bought a 15 inch TV just for fucking LAN parties. Um, my man, my man, that's what I'm talking um, about. That's what I'm talking but about. the 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 Switch version actually took the multiplayer. And made it an online multiplayer. Okay. All right. All right. Um, with that, I did end up um, buying another controller for the Xbox. Or, yeah, I got another controller for the Xbox in case, like, the neighbor wants to come over and we want to fucking kill each other and fucking GoldenEye and shit. Absolutely. Um, did you watch any movies? Did you go anywhere this week? Like, did you, like, anything, like... Like what would you do anything on the scene, man? Like so didn't really go anywhere yesterday, just kind of sat around the house all damn day. Um okay. cleaned up a little bit, made uh baked ziti last night for dinner because the only things the missus lets me cook is anything that goes on the grill or can go in a smoker or Italian food. Um which I mean, come on. Hey, it's all good, homie. hey, it's, it's, all it's what good, I do. Homie. Um, hey, man, it's all good. Like you be you, homie. You be you. Made uh, did that, and then I mean, we went over to the neighbors last night, played some Uno. Um, I like I like that you guys have like this really kick ass dynamic with your neighbors because like that's kind of like uh, that's almost like a thing of the past nowadays. You know what I mean? Where you like actually do shit with your neighbors and actually like know know who they are and yeah. exchange Christmas cards and shit and gifts at fucking you know in the, during the holidays and like yada yada. And it's like that that's really cool that you kind of have that dynamic. That like, and, it sounds and- it sounds very healthy. It sounds it just sounds healthy. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I mean, that's, that's the big thing is, you know, I, I like to, I I like to do shit like that. And, you know, I miss having a tribe. I miss having a tribe. 
Exactly. I've got my little tribe not here. The American, not the American dream. It's the tri- I just miss having a tribe. Like and, I'm out here. I'm out here lone wolfing it in fucking Kansas City, right? <laughs> and you know, the big thing is it, it it gives you something to fucking do. It 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 keeps the sanity, especially you know, for us vets that are used to having our buddies around all the fucking time. Yep. It's 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 nice. I mean, I like playing my fucking video games and doing that shit. Sure. But at the same time, Some sometimes type of, I want to just go back to fucking reality and do something. Well, social with sti- people. Some type of social stimuli is like very necessary for a healthy and productive yeah. life. You yeah. can't and you can't just fucking hermit the fuck out in a cave and expect shit to come to you. You know what I mean? Like and, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there. You know what I mean? You gotta like it, you know what I mean? Like I Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys like, you know, have ever like struggled with like anxiety or like, you know, like getting, getting caught up in the moment. And it's like, sometimes you like almost don't like some days you just don't want to even walk out the front door, but it's yeah. like, f- fuck it. I have to, it's almost like going to the gym, right? Like that day you just don't want to fucking like, you're just not feeling it. And it's like, well, shit, that's the day I have to fucking go to the gym then because like, I'm, cause I'm not, if I'm not feeling it, I have to fucking make myself basically. And like, you got to punch through that fucking bullshit in your head and and put yourself out there. Cause like, you never know, like there's beautiful people everywhere. You know what I mean? Regardless of like what, what kind of socializing or like me know, social energy. Yeah. Fucking a, how the fuck I'm did beautiful. we meet? How the fuck did we meet John? That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's like, we, we were, everybody was just putting themselves out there. Fucking, <laughs> you know, it was COVID. We're fucking gaming fucking 14,000 hours a day, dude. You know what I mean? Like, Goddamn, dude! Like that's all we—that's yeah. all we—that's all we did do. You know what I mean? Well, and see, like, and, and that's you know that's the big thing. It's like you know, COVID's what got me into streaming, and getting into streaming is what had me meet people like Max and Tony and Jason Gasses and Midnight. Good. And then I still, you know, enjoy streaming. I enjoy my tech. I enjoy all that. But now that COVID's not as big of a thing, and we don't have to fucking quarantine from people and stay away and stay indoors and shit like that. Now I'm like, okay, I, I need to get out and go do shit. Anyways, I work from fucking home. So, you know, 40 hours plus of my week. You're already in your goddamn are, house are spent already- in my fucking house. Right. So on the weekends, I want to get out and go do shit. Do most something. of the time, do something. Max says that he introduced oh, super in the, sweaty lobbies to Squilini. Yeah, fucking, fucking Max. Joe, this Joe, he, sh- he showed Joe and Tony. This motherfucker is the only motherfucker I know that can pick up any fucking FPS game. Why is it and called? just wreck fucking havoc? What's why, why is it called super sweaty? <sighs> why is it called super sweaty? I'm just curious. So I'm not familiar by with that. It. Pretty much. So you know how a lot of games have skilled based matchmaking now, like yeah. Call of Fucking Duty. Sure, um, sure. Super sweaty lobbies means you have that one person on the team that's so fucking good it fucks up skill based matchmaking for the rest oh, of the team. Oh, fucking chance for us that was chance. That was goddamn yeah. chance most of the time. Fucking J- J- John remembers. Yeah, John um, remembers. yeah when so, chance, anytime anytime chance would come into our fucking. It's one. He's one. For, for those of you guys not familiar, Ch- chance is one of our our uh, admins. Here at uh, DD214 Gaming and, uh, and one of the admins of the community. Um, and uh, yeah, when Chance would fucking hop into our fucking Call of Duty matches, it fucking, it skewed. We, we either fucking destroyed or we got destroyed. You know what I mean? Like there was up, no. He, he would fuck up the skill based match, matchmaking for us. Like every, yeah, all, every and, time, every time. Like un, undeniably, undeniably. It was, and it was because of him. It was because of him. That's exactly what fucking happens with Max. Now, we do have those rare occasions um, because we've we we were playing Call of Duty hardcore, but we've stopped because Call of Duty is full of fucking hackers and is just garbage. And chomos. Um, DMZ. Chomos. D- nothing but fucking chomos. <laughs> nothing but fucking chomos. We'll get to but, that later. We'll get to that yeah, later. But DMZ. Fucking- I mean, DMZ is a great mode for the latest fucking shit. Um, there are some issues with it. I've seen. I haven't played it as much lately um but got fucking max into playing Fortnite with us i went from fucking you know a phenomenal fucking katie in Fortnite to now 
I just play the fucking bullet cushion so Max can fucking flank around and just wreck havoc on motherfuckers. Um, we used to, I mean, we, we did that, have, we used to do that a lot when like, I, 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 I never give a shit about KD. So like, I ha- I have no problem being like the kamikaze on the squad. Like every time, like I'll like, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some Fortnite tonight, today. Get, Fuck get, you know, run, run out there and get, and get killed just so like my yeah. homies freaking know like where it's coming from. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, I, I give zero so, fucks about KD. You so know, I'm that's, like, that's just kind of that's that's what Max does for us in games. He ruins them. Um, <laughs> <coughs> but no, and you said I mean, and, and Max is the one that that was at West Point. Yeah, we're gonna have to bring him onto the show soon. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't think I don't know that we've had an officer yet. No, I don't no, think we've we had haven't. any officers yet. So yeah, no. that'd be uh, that'd be interesting to like yeah. pick, his, pick his brain a little bit from the. Yeah. Uh, once we once after episode one hundred, it's it's open doors. So, so you know, there's that. I did watch a movie this week. Uh, watched you people on Netflix, which we'll we'll go into a full discussion of that after. Well, why don't you get into it now, and uh, yeah. I'll leave my my um, week my week stuff for last. Yeah, Jay. I think because yeah, because you could probably segue into mine because I know uh, one of the movies we watched freaking we we have in common. So, so yeah. yeah so, um. But yeah, no, you people, I, I actually thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, it was a good comedy. It had good comedic aspect, aspects, but then it touched on a lot of shit that's real life mm-hmm. um, with, you know, racism and cultures, the differences between cultures. Um, Eddie Murphy, Jonah Hill. Um, Jonah Hill actually was one of the ones that helped write the movie. Really? Um, and the, it's it's you know a uh, middle aged Jewish white guy accidentally gets into a black chick's car thinking it's his Uber because the chick driving the car and the picture of the driver he's supposed to have for Uber are fucking identical, same fucking make and model of car and everything. Even though she's not the fucking Uber driver, they fall in love. She's in her family's Muslim. He's Jewish and just the culture differences and shit. And it was, it was insane, but there was some good comedic points in the movie also. Um, Like one is, and this is a little bit of a, it's not much of a spoiler. Eddie Murphy's character's name was like fucking Woody or some shit like that. But then he converted to being a Muslim and changed his name to like Akbar. So he's kind of so, like mil- militant, you know, like first, th- yeah. I think the, one of the first scenes you see him is like, said like Fred Hampton was murdered, which that's a, that's a, that's a, it, nowadays it would be called a pop culture reference, but Fred Hampton was a real motherfucker. And he was, he was, uh, he was in the, uh, um, God damn it. Um, Black Panthers. And he was, mm-hmm. and he was killed in his hotel room by the FBI. Yeah, and like, and this go. This is like, this is like some hardcore like civil rights shit that goes back to like you know the the sixties and seventies. And so like, when you see Eddie Murphy, like like one of the first scenes you see him in, he's got a hoodie on. It says Fred Hampton was murdered, and you're like, oh oh shit! Like Fred Hampton was murdered, and then he walks in, ain't fucking around, right? Like, and he's he's like talking about how like he's the darkest black dude in the fucking room. And everybody's hair is curly and he's got the nappiest head in the fucking room. This shit just like he was going hard on all the other people in this fucking in this fucking restaurant that he walked into. To so it was like daughter. classic. It was like classic Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they he I, I guarantee you he had a lot of creative freedom with a lot of his lines because that's just what Eddie Murphy does. Yeah. Um, And then. You know, the one of the other good points was fucking Mike Epps. I love fucking Mike Epps as a comedian, as an actor, even though he always gets these smaller roles in anything he fucking does. But he's like the brother. Uh, he's the brother of Eddie Murphy's character. And he's like more of the dude, you're being too harsh on this fucking kid. What the fuck? Kind of like, <laughs> dude. Who's just like, I don't care. Racism, stupid. You're being just as racist as the next person kind of thing to Eddie Murphy's character. And he's just not fucking having it. So I would, I would, I would say for me, a seven and a half out of 10 inches. 
That's probably that's probably like very close to what I would rate it as well. Like we just watched it last night. A lot of funny moments, uh, a, lot, a lot of awkward humor. Like, so I don't, I don't know how big yeah. of a fan. That's that's actually where it loses some of the points for me because, like, it was it was a very uh, a very it was a, it was a very good movie. It was very funny, and it and it also made you think, which was which is also good. But it lost a lot of points with me with the awkward humor. Like, there's a lot of awkward humor in there, and I like I don't, you know, I, I don't do the, the Seinfeld humor very well all the time. And where like just the situ where the situations are so awkward, like it loses the comedic value to me and makes me cringe. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm inwardly cringing, like inwardly cringing for, uh, for the, for, you know, for the, for the characters in the, uh, who is, who is this? This is Mike Epps. Mike Epps. Girls, big girls, I must confess. Skinny chicks, okay, but big girls, the best. Girl to look just like a bulletproof vest. Chilling in the club with the crumbs in your breasts. That's coming out on my new album called Fuck Lettuce. Big Fuck yeah. <laughs> So that's what the fuck I'm talking about. I dig that dude. Fucking was he in I the movie? Mike Epps. Was he in the movie we, we watched last night? Was he, he was the... uh, Eddie Murphy's brother. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. Fucking it. Yeah. See, like, I, I don't yeah, know. He's he's, pop he's, culture, so he's, fucking... he's 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 real in with um with um Ice Cube and that crew. Yeah. He was in yeah. the Friday movies. He was in what? Friday. Uh, Friday movies. Who did he play? Friday, Friday after next. Yeah, I remember. I saw Friday in the fucking movie theater. What, what character did he play in Friday? God damn it, dude! I think he was. I'm dude. getting old. I'm getting old. Day Day. Yeah, Day Day. He was. He was Ice Cube's cousin. Hmm. Must be. It's been a while since I freaking seen. You have to pull up what he looked like in fucking Friday. We're gonna have to do a, we're gonna have to do a watch party for for the Friday. Something, movies. man. Something, man. I got. I fucking I got so many so many movies. Like Nikki Nikki hasn't seen like anything ever and like yeah. there's like movies i fucking i was telling her about like uh fucking minister society last night oh, like shit. i shit fucking like grew up on that fucking movie dude and like like he's like never seen it yeah a great movie dead presidents but anyway uh did you watch anything else what up drew davis um the well, menace thought, no didn't well, really drew. i mean didn't really watch anything else did watch you know the obviously watch the latest episode of uh last of us which I know we're going to cover that at some point today. Um, if you want, we could talk about it real quick now. Absolutely. I'm down. You know, we I'm could cover Because yeah. remember, we have the Ten Commandments of Gaming and Microsoft Direct. So if you want to talk about Last of Us now and kind of just throw it in there. Sure. Um, so, so I mean. Oh, by the just... way, guys, spoilers. Yes. Spoilers. If, if you're not watching Last of Us and you plan on watching Last of Us and you haven't watched the episode, as a repeat from last week, which we said at last week's episode, every week we will be reviewing the latest episode of Last of Us in tandem with when it uh, comes out. So just be prepared when we start talking about Last of Us, mute us, leave for 15 minutes, whatever you might need to do if you don't want to hear anything that happened during the episode. The spoiler alert will be up here until it's gone. Until we're done so, talking about Last of Us, but yeah. All right, so everybody, y'all have had enough time. If you haven't left yet or muted us yet, that's your fault. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jay would so, say the same thing. So the the thing with that episode, it was it was a good episode. There were a few things that I definitely saw saw me? as a little off kilter. You looking at me, Jay? No. No, I'm getting a getting I'm getting a message from a special person so i have to freaking attend to it i'm sorry i'm listening sorry You're about good. that sorry about that so with with this episode i definitely liked some of the spots they touched on the 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 world the way they've actually made it all kind of come to life's great however the end of the episode one major issue i had let's hear it how the fuck after she just like literally seconds after lighting all that gasoline on fire with grenades in the middle of it, did those fucking grenades blow up that fast? Mm. The heat wasn't hot enough yet at that exact moment that the fucking grenades went off for the fucking grenades to go off. Jay? I'll tell you one up, dude. Like, dumb bitch, why are you pulling a fucking zippo out of your pocket when you could have picked up one of those fucking grenades and fucking like. Fucking pulled the goddamn pull the pin, pin, throw the grenade into the fucking gas, and then 
Done. I could understand all the grenades Floof. going off at that point. Floof. Floof. It's it's Arthur. funny that that the three of us saw like different tactical errors mm -hmm. that that like things that they could have done to get out of the situation. I mean, it, <laughs> I understand Tess had to die for the development of the story. Yeah, but I also feel like that they could have been a little more realistic on their path as they were trying to escape. Max asks, "Why wouldn't she use the grenade? I, I would have been better for her." Oh, we up. Oh, he's three seconds late. Well, see, that's that's yeah, that's that's the side J saw. But see, yeah. from a tactical standpoint, that's the thing. We're all gonna see it, uh, see something different, wrong with that entire scenario. Yeah, and yes. The, using a grenade to fucking ignite everything would have been a hell of a lot better than fucking using the Zippo. I 100% agree. I mean, hey, if you like making out with fucking monsters, dude. Okay, let, let's get, good, let's dude. talk about that real quick because good, dude. what the fuck? Like <laughs> she, first, was already, she was already infected, so she couldn't She really was already stop. infected. There wasn't really anything she else. Could, she, could, she couldn't stop it from happening. The fucking the fungus was communicating with the fucking infection inside her which which if you guys have been following the scientific evidence that this whole week alone about funguses and things like that and how ants are being destroyed by cordyceps right now really interesting stuff guys um but the kiss itself i mean that was a little daunting what? don't you think yeah, it was like you've never wanted to kiss a fungus infected zombie before, John. I I never wanted would, to kiss a zombie before. Never. You get you get what you pay for, dude. You get what you pay for, dude. Twenty bucks is twenty bucks, dude. Whether you got fucking zombie infections or not, dude. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I guess that was really it for the episode. It, I think it was another good episode. Uh, they it has been listed and described that this episode is going to be a breath taker. So whatever the hell that means. Um, there was, uh, yeah, there, gonna... was there were, it was a, it was a great episode i there were other tactical errors they made that i was not a fan of at all yeah. but we'll we'll talk you know i mean we'll, yeah. there, there we'll, were there we'll was, see how bad was... they we'll see how bad they fuck it up tonight dude and then I, we can maybe like go off on it like next week yeah, yeah. yeah i mean I, there I were other tactics i saw i saw a good bit of tactical errors too but the main one was just the fucking grenades and the fire and the like I that was like the one that stood out I didn't like I didn't I didn't like I didn't like their movements through some of the buildings. Oh hell no. I don't like I don't like that the mantling was terrible. If you're if you're gonna if you're gonna <laughs> if, if if there's fucking monsters that you're wor you're worried are gonna hear you, why in the fuck are we waiting until we're about to fucking like breach the building to fucking let the little girl know? You know what I mean? Like silence is you know, silence is key, dude. Like silence is fucking key, dude. And, and like, she got and she got bit again. No. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you know, like, if we're we're, we're talking about a, a TV show that's based on a survival horror video game, if we're talking about survival so that we avoid and live through the horror, like, can we get our fucking shit straight, please? You know, like, yeah, like, just get get your fucking yeah. shit straight, all right? Like, all your shit, well, get it together, put it in a box, fucking get get your shit straight, like, fucking. Well, well, you know, speaking of speaking of the uh, the little girl fucking um and telling her last minute after they've already breached the fucking building to shut the fuck up the missus she was like why not just fucking put duct tape over her fucking mouth <laughs> very interesting max says the kiss the kiss was done to save whether they use the same dynamic from the avatar tail bonding that's actually very interesting i'm going to look that up today um but yep another great episode um you got anything else, Squilini? Um, no, I am. Uh, I do want to just provide an update because a couple weeks ago I had talked about how I had started re-watching the Gotham TV show. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so I just got through the first episode of the last season last night. So by next week, I'll be able to do a full review of the whole show. Nice. Cool. You know what? Let me finish um, those last four episodes. I'll have it. I'll join you in that. Because I actually so far, um, so when it first aired, I'd watched it up through like season two. Never and then you know, Peacemail watched an episode here and there of the other seasons, but never watched it in its whole continuity, like from beginning to end. 
And now that I've watched it from beginning to end so far, I've, I, I like the concept and I like the way they went with it. Yeah. That's, that's the extent I'm going to go at this point next week, full breakdown. Um, once I've a hundred percent completed it. Word. I'm excited. Jay. Yes, sir. Do, How are you? you ha- what do you have this week? Not much. Not fucking much, dude. Fucking, I, we didn't do too much. Didn't do shit. Freaking took care of stuff, you know, day-to-day business. Fucking taking care of business like a fucking champion. Cause that's what the fuck I am. Right. So didn't really get up to, didn't really get up to too much this week. But uh, I did watch um, All Quiet on the Western Front. Not Moonshot again, right? What? 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 Not not Moonshot again, right? No, fuck no. Moon moon fuck, moonshine, moon moon whatever the fuck. (laughs) That stupid pile of dog shit, dude. Like, fuck Halle Berry for fucking, like, taking money that wasted fucking that, like, however long that movie is and taking it out of my life, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like boy, boy, so do all, I got a bone to pick with those people. So I, I'd love to hear what you think about All Quiet on the Western Front. I have something uh, to say about that movie as well. Which what movie? All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, what do you got to say? Oh, well, I didn't watch the movie, um, but I watched. Have you the read whole, the book? Have you read I, the book? I have not read the book. I know what the story is about, though. Um, but let, <laughs> but my look. You know how I am, and my thing is about production, right? Yeah. The production. Of this fucking film mm-hmm. is off the wall. Really? Okay. You should, maybe, okay. You should, maybe you should watch it or read the Look, book. I read, read I what I read, watched read the how the I watched how the movie was made. Read the book and, and the movie. I, I well, I'm not going to read the book. I watch the movie. Why don't you but, want to read the book, John? I'll listen to it. To... I'll listen to it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll listen to you it. Wanna, meet me in the middle. There we go. We'll meet on I'll the bridge. To it. Listen to it. You should. I'll listen to it. But what what I wanted to say was that the the production of the actual film itself, I mean, you could see it just watch it, just watching the movie. Um, but the behind the scenes making of just show no green screen, practical explosions, practical sets. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right there in the action. It was right. It, it was exactly what a World War One movie. Correct. Yeah, it's World War One. Mm-hmm. A World War One movie should should be. Um, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. But Please I want do. to hear what you got to say about Please it. Please do. So yeah, what you got? So I have a few things. Uh, I do want I, I do want to make mention that this movie apparently, as of this week, uh, is officially nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars this year. Which really. It, for you know, it's a Hollywood stroke fest, dude. But typically speaking, Hollywood, like what when they nominate a movie for best picture, for the most part, they're pretty on the money. Like most of the movies they put up there are quality films, Deser- right? deserving, de- deserving on some level. On some level, might not always be your genre. You might hate this or that best picture nominee from whatever year. Regardless, mm-hmm. you know, generally speaking pretty on the money for good movies. I saw, I've seen several of the movies that were nominated this year. And as, as I recall, all of them that are on that list are very good movies. Um, so that, that is going to definitely stand for all, all quiet on the Western front. Um, <clears throat> as far as like what they show and like how it looks. And if you can put yourself like about a hundred years ago in their, in their uh, metaphorical uh, trousers and boots. Right. Um, it's, it's interesting to watch. It's very interesting to watch. And yeah, especially if you haven't read the book, like I'll just say like, yeah, watch it. Like you should, you should totally, uh, you should totally check it out. Um, for those that uh, may have forgotten, uh, Kansas city, Missouri is also home to the national world war one museum here in the United States. Yes, it is. So if you ever want to go to a really kick-ass museum and learn about uh, how, how things were, back then uh you're gonna get a really good visual depiction of it in all quiet all quiet on the western front um because a lot of you illiterate functional like brain damaged individuals like don't like to read uh i'll just give you a little bit of forewarning it is it is told from the german perspective right 
So uh, get ready for fucking that. Get ready for a gut punch, dude. I hope uh, I hope some of you like watch it and realize like why things are the way they are, especially with some of us veterans, because it really doesn't matter like which side you fight for. Like typically speaking in war, um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the baseline stuff kind of stays the same. So I'm just gonna say, uh, watch it. It's it is a it is, is it would be on Jay's list of like much watch must watch films. Uh, if you're a, if you're if you're a uh, if you're a fan of uh, war movies, this is gonna go on the list of like you need to see this one. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a classic someday. This is about as close this is about as close uh, to a realistic depiction I've I've probably ever seen uh, as far as World War One, and as far as like how like absolutely like brutal it can be. There's there's been a few other movies that have been made and they're out there. That, that depict World War One like, you know, as it was kind of. This one is like, it's the whole fucking movie. You know what I mean? It's the whole fucking movie. It's, it's, it's going to be in line with like 1917. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, it's it's in line with it's in line with that, but it's from the it's from the losing side perspective, right? Okay. So yeah, can, yeah. Imagine if you can imagine that's that, you know, that going going into that element and then like and this is not a spoiler, by the way, but they, they do they, they do they shift they shift some of the timelines from the book. OK, so if you if you have read the book, they shift some of the timelines and very, very early in the film, they show the date and the date's November 7th, 1918. Mm-hmm. What, what date of the war end, guys? Do you, do either of you history champions know um, what day is Veterans Day? November 11th. OK, so November 7th, 1918, 1918. So one of their one of the first times you see the date in the movie, it's November 7th. It's four days before the war ends. Oh shit! So I'll just and I'll just leave it there. Fantastic. All, all quiet on the Western Front. Must watch. It is not going to get a rating on the ten on the on the ten inch scale because I'm just going to call it must watch. Must okay. watch. Okay. So, um, one and one last yeah, thing yeah. here. Max says they did a great job showing how the youth thought going to war was an adventure and how they were proven wrong. Yeah. Very interesting aspect and fantastic, guys. So um, nothing for me on my week. Uh, I do. I have a review. Okay. What you got for us, John? So, so the review I have for you today is Writers Republic. I reviewed Writers Republic by Ubisoft and was impressed by its features that included mountain biking, BMX riding, snowboarding, skiing, more. It's a it's a different type of game than what I usually play, but it has elements of Forza Horizon Five, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and Descenders. Okay. The op- the open world aspect is literally anything. It's unlike anything I've ever seen in other sports games with a massive world that includes everything from snowy from snowy mountains to sandy dunes to Arizona like canyons. I would highly recommend this game, especially since it, it's on sale right now. I got the deluxe edition for twenty three dollars. I apologize. What uh, what which uh, uh, console or what are you using for this game? You what, could what? you could you could. I'm playing on Xbox. You okay. can you can play you can play this game on um, PC as well. It is a cross platform game. I okay. assume I, I assume it's also on. Take care, Max. Thank you for coming. Um, I also assume you could play it on other on PlayStation, probably Switch. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't dive deep into that. The game itself is so fun. It is actionable, and you're literally in a lobby with hundreds of other people just doing stunts, uh, riding your bike. Flying around, uh, paraplaning. Um, I'm gonna give it a throbbing, girthy, oh boy. veining. Oh god! Full of balls. Nine out of ten. Damn, damn. It, this it, this game hasn't fucked in like three weeks and like needs to fucking let one go. Yeah. Like, and let me tell you something. And I'm giving this such a high score because it has high replay replayability value. Is this game? I'm still playing Descenders from last year. Yeah. So, this game is fun, and I'm not going to lie to you. Usually, when I buy a game, it usually gets on Game Pass like a couple weeks after. So, fingers crossed, guys, that the for, curse uh, still for, lives. For, for, the, 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 the John Stroke of Luck. That, <laughs> yeah, uh, I can play. I can play this game for free soon. Yeah, let's let's because it happened to me with like five other games in the past oh, two yeah. years, and I'm like, yeah. you son of a bitch. I really, I really, I really was seeking to to give a game review this week, and I know John, John and Joe are probably gonna like smirk and laugh at me, but like I tried two two different games this week, and I, I it just didn't happen, and I ended up downloading one that I I'm, I'm now playing with uh, my youngest daughter, so like it, 
it actually ended up working out because now me and my yeah. youngest daughter are playing a game together and it's just it's I, I really tried hard for you guys. I tried. No. And both, so, both games just did nothing for me. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to give you right. an assignment. How about that? You okay please, with that? Please, please, yeah, I am. You, you, hey, you're going to listen. You're going to listen to All Quiet on the Western Front. Fucking yep. audiobook. It's the least I, I can do. I it's want you do. to watch okay. six. Six. Just It's yeah. called, it's you know called what, six. You know um, what, history, history Channel. It's on the History Channel. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll find it on the internet. What's it's, it about? It, I know it's very weird. It's not a historical documentary or nothing like that. It's a two-season show okay. about about a special forces team just doing special forces shit. But there is a story within within that. You know, there's it talks it, it talks about how, how veterans struggle of wanting to be able to deploy and not being able to. Um drug abuse, addiction, love death losing your comrades um great show great sounds show familiar. sounds eerily familiar yeah eerily and familiar. and it has walton goggins your your uh your boy from uh yeah, yeah. sons of anarchy who's gonna yeah. be fall who's gonna yeah. be fallout be, yeah yep yep and yeah. um and the guy the actor um barry sloan who plays captain price in call of duty is the lead actor in six. Oh no shit he plays the he I plays the to, okay captain. I need to watch six. Oh, okay. shit. Okay. I and will, the show I will... was a. And apparently the show was filmed here in North Carolina in Wilmington. Oh, there you go. Up by Bragg, right? Uh, that's the coast. How far away is what? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not, bra not, not Bragg. There's in place in places where they do stuff out, out of Bragg. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> And it's no longer brag. It's now like Camp Liberty is the new name of it. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because they're, they're transitioning the names. Yeah, they well, are. Yeah. So, um, I so real quick, this is good. This isn't going to take long. This is just developer direct. It it was good to watch. Um, the one thing I enjoyed about the Microsoft Developer Direct, it wasn't a panel with celebrity hosts and uh, influencers. It was the developers. The guys who make the games mm -hmm. telling you about the game that they're making. Okay. Now t I can see why that would work. Tell me how tell me how well it worked. Tell me how well it worked. It was opinion. more it was more informative and more honest. Whereas so you feel like it was more intimate? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Really? Because now you're given the chance for the developers who never have the screen time or the chance to explain what they're doing. Well, I was going to say some, and well, and some of them have a lot to explain for themselves. When you, when, when we get games that are functionally broken on, on the release day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they and, have, and it's actually, and it's actually interesting that you bring that up because, um, dur during this panel, they did talk about like, they explained to you like this game, like I, when I get to Forza, they say like this game is not going to come out in the time that's supposed to come out because we want to make sure that it's right. We want to make sure it's playable, you know, right. which is, which is the big theme that right now. But, I don't know. I, I don't know how that ever became a thing. And in, in, fuck the video game industry. In yeah. Any, in to, any, to just think about any other industry, if that would work, like how well your business, how, like how fast your business model would a movie knows, knows a that. movie. Yeah. A movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna go sit in the theater, pay all that money, and then all of a sudden you see the green screen behind the people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like can you and, imagine and not that? for nothing, and it happens. Can you it imagine? Happens. Yeah. Can you imagine like the outcry and like. Give me my fucking money back, you fucking yep. assholes. Do I need and to remind anybody of the Starbucks cup in Game of Thrones? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, there dude, we go. Like, I'm telling you, it's like, it, like it, there's an outcry. <laughs> and the, the video game industry is the only industry that, like, not just allows it to happen. Like, it has, like, that model has, has like, thrived for the last several years. Where it's like, like, no, like, why would I not, why would I be anything more than a casual gamer? Like I need to make sure that games like don't fucking suck before I spend my money yep. on them. Yep. You know and what so, I mean? Like, and so the five games that they did show, some looked interesting. Um, the, actually, they all looked very interesting. And I'm going to start off real quick. We were first introduced to Minecraft Legends last year, and it has since been highly anticipated by fans of the sandbox survival game, members of our DD214 uh, community as well. But to our surprise, Legends turned out to be a multiplayer action strategy game with a narrative co-op mode and a PvP mode with procedurally generated environments. Today, we were given a deeper look into what Legends has to offer. And in Legends, players take on the role 
of a hero tasked with saving the overworld from the corrupting influence of the piglins from the nether. This epic story takes place in the Minecraft universe and is considered a tale that has been passed down through generations. Um, this is a very different take to what people are used to with Minecraft. It's not building. You're actually playing a game where you're strategizing with your friends to defeat your enemies. Good for the kids. Next. Foes of Motorsport is one of the most highly anticipated games in the gaming community, and it has not been given any official release date yet. But the team at, Te at Turn 10 Studios have recently released some exciting footage of the game showcasing its stunning graphics and attention to detail. This includes realistic dirt, damage, and wear and tear on the cars themselves, as well as improvements to the time of day. Trackside vegetation, visible behaviors of the cars. Uh, fans can expect a more immersive and realistic gaming experience with improved suspension and exhaust mechanics. Uh, again, there is no release date for this game right now. Another game that has been released already on the Game Pass. Uh, the developers over at Evil Within Studio have surprises with the announcement of a new game called Hi-Fi Rush. And this game puts players in the shoes of an up-and-coming rock star with a musical robotic arm who uses their skills to defeat corporate overlords and bad guys. The gameplay is set to, set to rhythm and beats, and the players will be using a flying V guitar to fight their enemies. It, yeah, <laughs> it looks like it's going to be fun and exciting game. Um, the game is already out on Game Pass if this is a game that you're interested in. This game I'm personally excited for because I hope to see you, Jay, and you, Squilini, and maybe one more of the DD214 crew in here. Redfall. Redfall is the latest project from the acclaimed video game studio Arcane, known for their work on games like Dishonored, Prey, and Deathloop. This time they're tackling the open world sandbox first person shooter genre with a game that features four player co op and a gothic setting. Players will team up to take on blood sucking vampires and use a variety of gothic firearms to do so. And according to Arcane, Redfall will feature their largest game world yet and will offer players multiple ways to tackle foes and objectives. Creating an immersive experience with certain outcomes. Redfall is set to be released on May 2nd this year. I'm personally excited for this. Each character has a different, uh, like a different ability, different weapon set, different things that they can do. I actually personally see Jay as um, the guy with the raven. And he has like a sniper rifle. Uh, probably that might be like yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could. Yep. I could also see that. Yep. And and last but not least, the next expansion for older Elder Scrolls Online Necrom is set to arrive soon. Players will be able to enjoy a brand new class, the Arcanist, and explore a new peninsula in the world of Morrowind, including a trip to the hellish realm of Apocrypha. With both Telestial and Explanar Adventures, the Necrom DLC will be available on June 5th for PC and June 20th for consoles. So, pretty cool. Okay. Fuck and, now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to talk to you guys about something. Oh, God. The fuck did I do now? So, we're going to do a thing called the Ten Commandments of Gaming, okay? Okay. Who the fuck came up with that shit? I did. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. These are... Now, these commandments have been put together from things that me and Jay have said through the years on, on this show. So oh, when, you, when, you, when you hear certain things, um, for example, camping, when you know when I'm talking about camping, you know what type of camping I'm talking about. Okay. okay. Right? Not the tactical camping that others do, but the Ten Commandments. Oh, here we fucking go. Number 10. Thou shall not ignore the power of the mute button when dealing with toxic players. I agree. Fucking A. That's absolutely on the list. Like, we we got really good at that, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. Number nine. Thou shall not steal thy friend's weapons in first-person shooters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, I mean, assuming they're still alive, right? Assuming they're still alive. Assuming they're still alive. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, it's it's a pretty dick move. It's like can, can we can, can I add on to that though? Please. Weapons or chests 
that your teammate are about to open. Ooh, yeah. Always, uh, I also have to operate under the assumption that they that they know they're that you're right behind them too, though. Because sometimes, yes. like sometimes, um, they're like, you know, so this is more targeted towards Max because oh, I've oh, sat oh. there and been about I to open it. a I fucking yeah. chest. Tell us how you feel. And the motherfucker yep. comes in, grabs you know. all the fucking shit that comes out the goddamn chest. Stay with the chest. After I fucking <laughs> opened it. Yeah, I knew that one was personal. I knew that one was personal. Yep. That, that had personal written all over yep. it. I, I could hear it in your voice, dude. Number eight. <laughs> this one is personal. And tell me you guys haven't gone through this before. Okay. Thou shalt not steal thy friend's characters in fighting games. Back in the day, sure. Sure. Like when when you like when you couldn't be like the same guy, you know, like in Street Fighter 2. And like you wanted to be like you want to be right. You wanted to be right. You red, went, not right. You blue. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, and then yeah, like that one ass- asshole friend that like he knew Zangief, so he would just like three sixty pile drive your ass like three times, <laughs> and, the, and the fucking match was over. You know what yep. I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, number seven. Thou shalt not camp, lest thou be forever hated by thy teammates. I'll break that motherfucker every day, dude. Every day. Oh, I know you would. Yep. Uh Number six, thou shalt not use the weapon of mass destruction, the noob tube. What's that? In, on, in online play. What is that? What's the noob tube? <laughs> so the new tu- noob tube, literally in Call of Duty, it's called the new tu- noob tube. It's a sight. It's a thermal scope. It, no, he's talking, we're talking about the grenade launcher. Oh, you're talking about that noob tube. Yeah, the, the the original noob tube, the grenade launcher. You know how like when when you're a new player and you just want to get some points and, get and you just fucking just use you the just grenade, take a launcher. grenade launcher in there and fucking start like waxing everything, like the literally tube. everything. I di- I've never played like that, but yeah. Number I've seen five. This one's my favorite. Thou shall not rage quit, lest thou be forever known as a sore loser. Yeah. Yeah. Although, although I will like a little caveat with that one though. There is a caveat. There's nothing wrong with like knowing when you got to stop. Like, so it's like, you're like, you're, you're, you're getting up to a certain level and you, and you lose the next game. And so it's like, it's not going down. You might want to put it down mm-hmm. for a little bit, take a fucking break and relax. You know what I mean? Cause it is at the end of the day, just a fucking game. Right. Yep. So. Yep. Um, number four. Honor thy controller and keep it clean and free of sticky buttons. You know, some of you nasty motherfuckers out there keep your fucking controllers cleaner than your weapon. Fucking so, disappointed. Disappointed. So okay. This is where, Let me know. where I'm going to give you the age old tech guy trick. What you got? If you're one of those guys that has to eat like fucking Cheetos. Or Doritos while you're gaming. Fucking chopsticks. Chopsticks are your best fucking friend. No more Cheeto dust or Dorito dust on your fucking finger. That that's like a fucking solid ass fucking life hack right there. That's brilliant. That's fucking Squilini. I I I think I just gained. I think I just gained twenty pounds. Fucking like because I now I now have that information. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> Number three. Remember the rule of threes. Three lives, three continues, three strikes. Then you're out. What is that? What what, what would that be like? Kind of in reference to like what just so general, so like so for patience. If you're oh, playing a game, I see, and you are ha- or if you're playing a game on the hardest difficulty, right? Three lives, three continues, fucking three yep. strikes, fucking. Just I bring bring it on down. Do you remember when I was? Do you remember when I was like freaking smashing on Ghost of Tsushima like for like three months straight, dude? I I started playing it on the hardest difficulty and like and I was getting through it. I was making it and yeah. it was like, but it but it was there were certain parts of that game like the specifically like the one on one fights when you fight people one on one, where it was like, oh my god, like it, it was extremely difficult. And I was like, yeah. but I was making it. I was making my way through that motherfucker. And like, yeah, dude, like that's, there were, there were, there were days in that little stretch where like I had to, I had to like put it down for a little while, 
You know what I mean? Like, yep. and then just go back, go back to it a couple hours later, like the next day, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And uh, let's see what uh, number two. Thou shall not cheat, lest thou be forever banned from online play. Oh, period, dude. Like, fuck all y'all, dude. Do we need like, to period. say any more? No. Do we need to say any more? Nah, dude. I, I've never, I've, I've never understood the, like, I get the idea behind it and, like, the competitive nature. But when it comes to video games, like, there, I don't, I've never understood the, the, the need or the need or even desire for it because it's, do you not want to test yourself? Do you not want to, like, you know, put yourself mm -hmm. out there? You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best. That's fucking perfect. Absolutely. But it, there also comes like, there also comes a, a, a level of self-awareness to know kind of like where your skill level is at. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to see me fucking winning like the hundred thousand dollar fucking call of duty tournament. Right. But if I play with people like within my skill set, you know what I mean? Like in, in, that, in, in that like borderline area, I tend to do pretty good. Right. Yeah. And that's really all it comes down to. Like, I know about how good I am playing video games and I, and to, to cheat to like, what are you getting out of it? I don't just the mentality behind that, like specifically for video games. Like, what are you getting out of it? You're just, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, eh, no, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Eh. And, and number one, which I think is the most important one. Thou shall save thy game often, lest thou lose all your progress. I still struggle remembering to save sometimes. I'm I'm really yeah. glad some of my games have auto save. Yep. Because, because I would be so fucked sometimes. Like agreed. Like agreed. Yeah. That's good. Uh, That's so good. Yeah, that was that was the Ten Commandments, guys. So good. We're we're gonna go to a quick thirty minute commercial. Thirty minutes. I mean thirty oh, second commercial. My bad. Damn. Um. We're just when gonna end with the commercial. Is that what we're fucking when, doing? When we be right back, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have some news. Um, I have to take a piss too. I think this commercial is like a minute and a half long. It's for the artificial mind. We're testing out commercials now. Um, we're gonna have some comedy ones next week that I'm fuck editing, right. but uh, got, but yeah, yeah. fuck but it. Yeah. Right. We'll be right back. Are you fascinated by the intersection of artificial intelligence and the human mind? Do you want to stay up to date with the latest developments in this rapidly evolving field? Look no further than the artificial mind podcast. Hosted by veterans Jeremy Strobridge and Jonathan Sanchez, each episode delves into a new and exciting topic, from the creation of images through AI to the impact of nightmares on our mental and physical well-being, and much more. They use cutting-edge technology, like Midjourney, to uncover new insights and perspectives on the world of AI. So, whether you're a tech enthusiast, a student, or just curious about the future, Tune into the Artificial Mind Podcast and join Jeremy and Jonathan on an exciting journey into the unknown. Available now on your favorite podcast app. Well then, we will be right back, everybody. Everybody's kind of walked off for a minute. Oh, so so you were the only one back here, huh? Um, I never walked away. Oh yeah, I was just about to stand up to go. Run. I was just yeah. about to stand up to go run to the restroom, and then it ended, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like oh, everybody else is gone. You never um, leave dead. You can't leave dead air, Squalini. You can't leave dead air, dude. You gotta do. You gotta say something. Can you it's imagine something. if all of us went to go piss and none of us were here when the commercial was? <laughs> yeah, well we can edit that shit out later it just sucks for the live audience you know like whatever yeah. oh man i just think that's like, a, that, i, I that think that's a 10, funny piece. 15 seconds of fucking dead air we're gonna have to remove <laughs> yeah uh so we, we uh we're gonna talk about something we got uh real quick gaming news we got military news real quick and then we're gonna we're gonna close off with the final thought uh, as always uh but welcome back to our gaming podcast today we are discussing the latest update on the microsoft acquisition uh Xbox boss Phil Spencer has stated that he's more confident in the acquisition now compared to a year ago. The deal is currently being looked into by regulatory boards to see if it's too big of an acquisition. Spencer also reminded us that the original time frame established by Microsoft was 18 months and we're currently 12 months into it. He added that there are still six months left to...
All right. Well, that just fucking That's happened true. too. Um, let's see this. It looks like his network dropped. I'll get back in here. For those of you guys uh, tuning in live, we're talking about uh, chomos. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and how, how they, um, and how they affect corporate global global structure. Yeah. <laughs> and how Microsoft is, uh, yeah, Microsoft is yeah. doing Microsoft shit. Um, okay, I got you, homie. I got you. We'll see you here in a second. This is going to be a good bit. <laughs> All right, later. Later. Fucking internet drop. His power went out, but he's coming oh, right shit. back. He said he's coming right back. He's going to be here so in a it flicked second. Or, flickered I off and off. I love this shit, dude. This is fucking, this is, this is what happens when you go live, man. You fucking, fucking raw material this. here, guys. Um, fucking deal with this. Y'all see it. <laughs> y'all see it first. <laughs> So we had, we had a saying we had a saying in the infantry, and you know if 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 it, if it was you know doable and yada yada, you know you did what you had to do. But our saying was was fitfo, it was figure it the fuck out, you know. And sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes you just got to figure it the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like that's that's all you can do. You know what I mean? And that's like we've been, we've been we've been doing this we've been doing this podcast for almost uh, two and a half years now, and or I think. I think it has been two and a half years. I think we're coming up on three years this year. We are actually, I think in June, Mm -hmm. June will be, uh, June will be three years since we started this podcast. And we, for the most part, like probably about like over 95% of the podcast, we we go live. And so going live, like you just, you know, you kind of have to like roll with the punches sometimes and shit happens and it is what it is. So since fucking uh, Jay's got the fucking seat, I want to remind everybody uh, this is episode 95, uh, which me- which means we are slowly but surely, week by week, encroaching on episode 100. Uh, we plan on uh, having a good time that day. We're gonna see if we can hear from uh, from some old friends and uh, make some make some stuff happen. Get some good party vibes, you know, to celebrate. Um, it's been it's been a very interesting road. Uh, me and me and uh, John have traveled, and we've had uh, very a lot of good friends come along the way. Including our, our our new co-host uh, Squalini here, you know, Mr. Joe Squalini, dude. We love you so much, dude. Um, it's 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 funny, like watching the uh, the evolution of this podcast. And it's been oh, it's yeah. been great. it's been a very very interesting ride, as with probably anything in any one of our lives. It's been a very interesting ride. You know what I mean? It, it definitely has. I mean, you know, being someone that watched the show for, I think what this is season four right now season three is when i started watching Mm -hmm. um and then now being part of the show on a weekly basis and going back and watching older episodes from before i even started watching right the evolution of of the show has just been has been a whole nother fucking level like production values gone up the way things are done has just evolved over time Mm-hmm. And and that's you know that's part of what makes a good a good show is that evolution. We're we're always changing, evolving, making sure things are absolutely going well, towards it, the better. It, it, it and and to, you know to, to even to even kind of bounce off of like you know we're talking about milestones. I mean, even going off of like how how the podcast came to be at the very beginning of it, compared to like where it's at now. And and when you watch some of the earlier content, you know the 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 structure and the overall vibe is there, but you could see that we were feeling we were feeling stuff out just like little by little, little by you know. And we weren't we weren't sitting there trying to run marathons every week. We were taking fucking land like fucking inch by inch. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like just fucking low crawling. You know what I mean? Low crawling to the mm-hmm. fucking until we can get a better vantage point, and then we hit the fucking and then we hit the next the next hill. You know what I mean? And that's yep. what we've been that's what we've been doing. And John, I was telling, I just saw you came back. I oh yeah. Telling, I was listening the whole time. I was listening yeah, I was, the whole time. I was telling Squinny, hey, we're, you know, we're coming up on episode hundred here in about five weeks. And then, uh, in June is going to, June is going to be our third anniversary. Yeah, like, it is yeah, for the, for the, like for the actual pot, you know, yep. just yeah. old school, like, you know, very beginning podcast. You know what God, I mean? Like, it was, so, it was a hot summer day. That was fucking dude. That was dude. 2020 was a dirty black summer, as my uh, my old friend uh, Glenn Danzig would say. That was a dirty black summer, dude. Like good, it really fucking, was. good fucking golly, Miss Molly, dude. That was I'm just 
glad, glad, glad that year is over. Like, I don't know about you guys. I'm kind of, I was happy to see that one fucking into the sunset. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm very, I'm very happy about it. And before I got, before my power went out, I don't know what happened. Uh, I, yeah, you were talking about chomos. Yeah. So it was pretty, so that, that's pretty, that we all know the acquisition is going to happen, but it's oh, yeah. actually Come kind on. of funny. It's kind of funny that this is actually kind of happening in the time because it has, there's been a lot of chomo talk being revealed within Activision. And if you guys know the history of Xbox and what, and Microsoft and what they went through in, in their beginning, when they were doing, you know, when they were creating the first Xbox, they were having a lot of similar issues, not chomo issues though. Um, if you guys don't know what chomo means, I, I highly suggest you look it up. There are certain words that we are not allowed to use on air because we will get shadow banned and you'll probably never see the DD214 podcast again because whatever. Um, but we need to put awareness out there for people to understand that right now there is a weapons pack in Call of Duty right now. And the weapon is called Saikdong and Saikdong is Korean culture. And there is, and what they, what it looks like is the flag for a bunch of chomos. And it's, it's, it's not a good look. It's not a good look, especially there's a lot of kids who play, who play Call of Duty. Um, It's pretty blatant. If you look, if you look at it. For those of you that don't know what chomo is, they are rapists of the minor community. Yeah. And we don't stand for that shit. And people need to know what's going on here. So I want to know who was the person that approved the design of the weapon to go up there. Um, there's also been ties with this stuff with Bob, with CEO Bobby Kotick. Um, you know, if, if you look at some of the things, it's been said that his name is actually on the Epstein flight list as well. Uh, the real conversation is, is Microsoft coming to save the day is microsoft so, coming so. to is because we 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 know we we learned of the frat boy mentality from the last two years the unfortunate death that took place during the holiday party um this now and just constant constant bullshit coming out of the offices of, of activision so i'm thinking uh, the only thing i can think of is is microsoft coming in to save the day are they going to completely clean house once the acquisition is in? If you got, should I they mean, change the name? If you got a, if you if you got a fucking chomo problem, you're gonna have to root it out. You know what I mean? That's those are uh, those types of the lowest of the low. So if if you have those kind of human beings like running around in your in your business in your structure, especially if they're in like positions of like special care and trust or like higher levels of management <coughs> you got a fucking bigger problem you know what i mean yeah. then, then then you know then you might you know yeah <coughs> holy fucking shit like yeah we have a big problem with activision right now and death to chomos death to chomos yeah and the one thing that really bothers me is that the weapon pack is still up and it people are aware of the design all right guys my computer is gonna freeze um just don't go anywhere but oh you're but, good homie we love you so much but you know um this is this is awareness you know we're spreading the word uh do the research yourself do the research yourself i i don't want to put that flag up on here i don't want to put any of any of the any of that stuff shown absolutely not mm-hmm. absolutely you know not. uh do the research yourself um do the investigations, gather up what you can, but you'll see at the end of the day that all the evidence adds up that there's a bunch of pieces of shit at Activision that need to be cleaned out. Yep. Uh, it, it, ha- it has to happen, you know? Uh, and, and now it's coming more to, it's not not just for the gamers now, it's for the livelihood of the people that work for them and probably who are going to work for them in the near future within the next possible six months, you know? It's a big thing. People have a right to know when fucking monsters are fucking in their midst. Exactly. And, like, and there needs to be people that can fucking take care of the fucking monsters, dude. Yep. I mean, it's why, this it's, is, why it's why we have different MOSs in the fucking in the army. You know what I mean? That's and, right, guys. Me, and, the and, military. 
This is silent. This is silent history that no that no one is talking about right now. So, you know, in saying that, we're here at our final thought, guys. Um, is it me? Am I taking it? You, you are can. Taking you it? Just yeah. make I'll it. take it. Yeah, yeah. So did you want to? Did never mind. Never mind. Your computer. Never mind. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Don't don't yeah, don't even try it. You're, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're still you're still coming in good. You're good. Okay, okay, because I, I see myself slowing down a little bit, but yeah, but look, yeah. but hey, guys, uh, new year, new problems. You know that doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> you know that 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 never changes. But guys, you know, just don't forget, you're never alone. Okay, well, um, we are in the midst of probably the greatest year for everybody. Everyone looks like they're in, they have better energy, better goals. Um, everyone seems more focused. Keep what your focus is. Stick with your goals, guys. Okay. Cause this is, th this is the time. This is the time to mold your successes and turn them into turn, fucking power zord that shit. All right. You know, mega zord that shit. It's time. Okay. But if you're having a hard time and getting yourself out of that slump, out of that motivational slump, guys, you're not alone. Always remember that you can either contact any of us here at DD214 Gaming, any of your friends, or you can call 1-800-273-TALK. You can also hit start 988, okay? Their job, and most likely volunteers, I, I don't know the inner workings of, of these programs. If there are volunteers in it, we thank you. If there's people who work, the people who work for these call centers, thank you because they are here for you. Their job is to listen to your story and to get you out of that hole, to get your head out of that bag and to get a breath of fresh air and touch that grass, okay? It's gonna be okay. We are all here for you, okay? 22 a day is still too much. One a day is still too much. The, the, the number of suicides this year alone is at a ridiculous amount. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping an eye on that, um, but you should it's it's something it, it is public information the rate of suicide is high and we are only 29 days into the year it has to stop today guys so remember 1-800-273-TALK 1-800-273-8255 or star 988 guys join us next week for number 96 the backwards 69 hopefully hopefully something big is going to happen this week we're waiting for the good stuff but we're going to figure it out we've got some good football going on today freaking everybody enjoy yourselves enjoy yourselves enjoy yourselves responsibly all right freaking watch the last of us tonight right? nothing good watch the last of us tonight nothing good nothing good happens after midnight nothing good usually happens Woo! after 10 p.m all right keep yourselves fucking safe if you're going to tap it wrap it if you can't wrap it don't be a dummy shoot on her tummy all right, fucking at your at your fucking safety brief. All right, so <laughs> oh shit, I love it, guys. I'll see you guys later in the hundred sixty eight, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir.